Hello fellow Legos, you're joining us once again for another theatrical trip in North London. We're in Wembley. We are in Wembley, we're at the Troubadour Theatre and we had to come here because the production that is being housed here right now marks the return of major indoor theatre in a post-coronavirus age. Whoa, Whoa, it's happening. Theatre is happening. It's happening. coming back, fellow Legos. Isn't that exciting? We are here to see Sleepless. A romantic musical. A musical romance. I was so you close. Were so close. So Don't call it Sleepless in Seattle because <laughs> copyright. copyright. So it's Sleepless. A musical romance. Okay. Don't say, not that one. Anyway, stick yes. around to find out all of our thoughts. Find out how many stars. And whether it's break leg or leg, leg it. it. I keep wanting to say when we say sleepless, like sleepless in Seattle, but it, but it's not. But it and is. It's not even it sleepless is. in Seattle. Not even sleepless musical. No, it's sleepless, sleepless a musical, musical romance. romance. Now it is it is based on the 1993 musical. No, really? not even musical. <laughs> it's based on the 1993 movie Sleepless in Seattle, yes. which starred Tom Hanks, yes. Meg Ryan, yeah. and most importantly Rosie O'Donnell. It was huge. Yeah, it was a huge not film. The film, not Rosie. Well, I mean, Rosie is a huge celebrity. She is a huge celebrity, thank you. And she's got a huge heart, I love her. Now, yeah. the musical... <laughs> thank you. The movie... Thank you. I can't... Movie, musical, sleep in Seattle, where am I, what's going on? It's, it's been weird. a long time since we've done one of these. I don't know what we're doing. I don't, like, this is, what are we doing what are, Where are we? Who are we talking to? Right, the movie, <laughs> the movie. was a box office smash. Okay. And it grossed more than $227 million worldwide. That's big, have you seen it? Yes. What did you think? I didn't. I didn't think much of it. I, I thought, thought it was forgettable. Yes, yeah, slow. Do you Maybe know, what are we missing, mind, fellow Legos? Do you know what it was? What? The whole way through, I was thinking this needs a tap number, and now it's bloody got one, probably. Is that really what you were thinking? Well, that's any any old boring <laughs> movie. You do think a bit of soft, anything bit boring of soft can be improved here. by a bit of soft. You know, shoe. if someone burst into song and gave a bit of bit of tap. So where did cats go that. wrong? That's all I'm saying. Where did cats go right? Is a bit. That's a, that's a shorter video, isn't it? Anyway, if you don't know the story of Sleepless in Seattle but not. Um, it's a long distance love tale that sees the character of Sam who grieving the death of his wife is convinced by his eight year old son Jonah to call a national radio talk show with the hope of finding him a new companion. Okay. Now the part of that eventual companion Annie is being played in this musical adaptation by X Girls Aloud member and Strictly Come Dancing runner-up Kimberly Walsh. Okay. Kimberly's no stranger to the stage either, having appeared in the West End in Shrek the Musical, Elf the Musical, and most recently Big the Musical. So if you're doing a the musical, call Kimberly. She's is available. This why you keep saying the musical. Yeah. It's all down it's to her. But this isn't the, the musical, credits. remember. This it's is not. It's a romantic a musical romance, romance. A musical romance. Now, she starred in Big the Musical alongside Jay McGuinness, who's reunited with her here as he's playing the role of Sam, that was Tom Hanks in the film. And apparently, if, if you need to musicalise a Tom, Tom Hanks, Hanks film, that role, man. he's your man. Because okay. he was the lead in Big as well. Gotcha. Now, Jay's also former Strictly Come Dancing alumni and won the series back in 2015. Oh, wow. But first found fame as a member of the boy band The Wanted. Oh, brilliant. Okay. Also in the cast for this is the wonderful Harriet Thorpe. Yes. She's known for TV works such as Absolutely Fabulous, The British Empire, but she's also done musicals such as Wicked and Ruthless, we saw her in. Got Absolutely. a review of that. She's a brilliant Check actress. Out. She's just great. I mean, she's done plays galore, yep. TV film, the lot. You can't go wrong with Harriet. And I'm a bit sure. biased there, but anyway, it's another story. I mean, story yeah, for another time. You've got time. history, ain't ya? We got history. Now, Sleepless has a score by composer Robert Burdett and lyricist Brendan Cole. Um, it has its world premiere here, but it sort of had a trial run back in the end of 2019, where Michael Xavier took the part of Sam. Wow. And it was due to open brilliant. here in March, right? but didn't because coronavirus in it. And now he's not available. The the the, the Rona. The Rona. So and now it's, he's it's the busy. world premiere, yeah. but it had a bit of a stint. Now, perhaps Last most year. excitingly about this production is it's been directed and set designed by Morgan Large. Two for one. Morgan now, Morgan Large, Large, we know from Joseph. And yeah, he wowed us last coach. year with Joseph at the Palladium. So, yes. can't wait to see what he's done here. Two hours 15 with interval. 
which is a bold choice to have an interval in this day and age because you don't it want is. people to be too close to one another. You think the easy um is that? Is that right there? <laughs> the easy Hi. thing would be to no, have no no, no, no interval no interval yeah. and just to go through so you it don't works. have to worry about the toilet situation, but not here. It's a full it's full on, it's full yeah, on. Okay. Full on, two hours fifteen and so we'll catch you again for our thirty second interval breakdown because I think we do that. We yes, used to do that back we in the did, day. and stick around to the end to hear our thoughts and find out how many stars. Yeah. See you then. Who are these? Who are we? Who are we? Hey fellow leggers, you're going to want to stick around to the end to find out about all the COVID secure measures that are taking place in this theatre, which are so far so good. But right now, it's time for the Breaker Leggers 30, 30 second, second interval, interval breakdown. breakdown. Go, what you go first. Me? Like I really want to love it, but the direction is so lacklustre and the score, man, every song sounds the same. All of the things I didn't like about the film, about the pacing, are right here, so it's true in that respect. What about you? Um, a very capable company and cast, I can tell that. The sound is good, the band is good as well. However, it's so slow, it's so pedestrian in its staging that it's really disengaging and as such, I don't care. Oh, Fellow leggers, we have come to the end. Yes, but before we get on to whether Sleepless a Musical Romance was a dream come true or a cure for insomnia, uh, let's talk about <laughs> let's talk about coronavirus. That was good. Let's talk about coronavirus yes. because this is our first theatrical major, I guess, production really. Indoor in a, production. Indoor production. And they're calling it COVID secure venue. So let's talk through that process. What did they do? So um, as, before we came in, they did the usual checking of our temperature, do, do, scanning on your phone QR code so you yes, are track, the track and, and trace. trace. Do you know it's a really nice venue because it's mm -hmm. really this open courtyard it, they have a bar just here so you can have a drink outside inside the venue the ceiling is really high it must be a 30 foot high ceiling and it's really spaced I out. mean this is formerly so, a TV studio so they would need all that space. I for felt as if it was really easy to maintain beyond two meter distance yeah. everyone was really um, respectful yeah, actually. And everyone was wearing masks inside yes. all of the staff all of the patrons. Stations here. everywhere and one way things on the floor yeah to make sure you're going in the right direction in and out of the auditorium it yeah. was one way only as well you yeah. went in one way out the other I said this, say something else? yeah well I said this before I said <laughs> if you are comfortable going shopping if you're comfortable going to a restaurant there should be absolutely no reason why you're uncomfortable coming to an indoor theatre when they have all of these safety measures in place and are taking them so seriously it's cold in there though it is cold in there I'm the air conditioning is I mean, it's, it's wet it's, it's raining it's wet outside but inside but inside it was cold layer up fellow leggers I had my because coat they on. like to pump pump in that freezing cold air which is good for the performers right you don't sweat so much absolutely and i'm um of the understanding as well that the cast before every show are tested they are before COVID. every single show because they get close and as they're well. bubbled up as a as a company and, and cast crew, up. so they couldn't be safer like i say if you're happy to go shopping if you are happy to go and eat out to help out when you could do that, then you should be happy to go And there. as I said, I'm really happy but, that theatre is happening. Yeah, it's great that it's happening but because against say, all odds. Yeah. You it do is you happening. though. Like don't just take you know, literally don't let us force you to the theatre and then you get sick. Yeah, take like, your own safety yeah, into you, your you own hands. You do your own risk assessment. We guys, can only but, risk assess so far, yeah, absolutely. So when you feel safe to do so, then do so. Then do so. Yeah. Right. <laughs> is that a disclaimer yeah, over? A disclaimer. But it's right. really great that um theatre is happening. Yeah, and as I've probably put on the um down below earlier, mm -hmm. we've got to say about the director and the cast. Yeah, and the, we um, said that Morgan a large had directed and and designed but he hasn't no there's, there's two, two morgans. morgans there's two too morgans. many morgans for the broth so uh, morgan probably... large is on design and morgan young is on direction young and large young and, young and large you can see how we young get confused on director, and i mean it's not large and it's, it's not hard anyway confuse, we'll come on to them so yes. let's first of all we'll talk about because um... they want to shut up here i'm sure <laughs> right <laughs> let's talk about sleep let's talk about the piece let's and the, talk about, about the, the story piece. the story what do you think of the story first of all i mean they should call it stalker in seattle really for me because although it's a romantic piece I mean she does hunt this guy down 
Like, I've got to say, like, I was a little bit uncomfortable with it. Were you really uncomfortable it? with yeah. it? Yeah. I was thinking if someone turned up at my house and somebody turned up at, and like... And you're the romantic one. Am no, I? You see, no, I well, think... one of us has to be. I mean, the, the bar's pretty low. <laughs> come the end, come, like, the last ten minutes, I saw, okay, I get the appeal of this piece. It is a romantic piece. It is about that destiny and about the life isn't really like it is in the movies. Oh, but what if it is? Or what and if you make it be? What if you make it? And maybe if you Take do pursue those dreams. Maybe if you do take bull, the bull by its horns, then things the do bull happen. By its what? Horns. Oh, horns. Sorry. Horns. Yeah. Then maybe things. <laughs> then maybe <laughs> things do happen. And you know they say that sometimes life is stranger than fiction. Yeah. And like life is, but actually this is a story, and they made their own path. So there's she, something. She would have freaked me out. So there up, is like, something in out. that, but it was meant to be. No one likes to drop. And that's by. the magic of the piece. Yeah. And I do think that there is an essence of romance in there. Okay. Good. But Boy, does it take a long time to get anywhere. Yes, And it does. even with the film, I think that was the idea. So come the end, I've forgotten the film completely, but mm -hmm. it's almost null and void for me, the end. But I think for those who like a romance story, and maybe that's where the appeal is, that this is quite appealing. That's all I've got to say. Good. What have you got to add? I just didn't being care, a really, story? about any of the characters. I didn't care who he ended up with or why. I mean, the, the son... I, do you know what? It just all felt a little bit uncomfortable for me as a story. Like the fact that the, a grieving husband can be fixed by a sort of a random woman and that's what it's going to take to make him whole again. And the, the son being so desperate for a new mother after only one year or, or so of her. Do you know, I, I just wasn't comfortable. I'm not going to lie. I just don't buy it. I'm, something's not quite, feels quite right about it for me. Anyway, okay, okay. Let's, let's talk about this to, production. Let's talk then. about this production. Boy, is it. I'm going to ask you a question now. It's just a straight up question. Is this the worst, the most badly directed piece of professional musical theatre we've ever seen. I think it's up there. I think it it's is. It's really I think it's made really... me... Do you know what? You need the rough with the smooth. You need the highs with the lows yeah. to be able to appreciate the highs. Yeah. And I've come away really appreciating the highs yeah. out there. Because and this... when they get it right, they get it right. But I was thinking of so many productions the where they've got it right. With regards to musical staging and direction, this couldn't be worse. Like, I feel... Like, I don't... It was just I, everything it, about I, it. I, I, I'm hard to express it, but everything about it were decisions default. which shouldn't have been made. Now I could understand it if they were told to stay away from one another. But they weren't. But they I weren't. Was thinking the yeah, same. Yeah. I was thinking, and the, literally, the, so much of the ensemble. This is a talented cast. Yeah, the really ensemble talented. are talented. They're trained at the best places in London and throughout the country that you could hope to go to. They are capable. They can move and sing. Do they really get a chance to do any of that or show any of that off in? It's this? almost insulting nope. to, I to it was that insulting company to because it's company. almost like a director has said to them, look, we know you can't walk and sing at the same time, so we're not going to make you do that. And these people want to show their craft it was so demonstrate their ability. It was and so un no, uninspiring. No, not allowed to do that. I could, not the most, one of the most dynamic staging parts, I, I could recall actually what the cast did of this ensemble of males. They kind of came forwards, then they kind of went to a corner, and they come, then they did swirl, and then two went over that way. And I'm thinking, wow, that's usually 16 bars of an overture of some of the great stuff we've seen. And yet here, this is quite a highlight in yeah. this piece. Yeah. And so it's just uninspiring so much. Just just sing it, guys. Just stand there, sing now, it out. Now, if we'd have sing paid out, to people. come and see a just... concert, and we'd have paid to see Kimberly Walsh sing some nice sounding songs. I'll come on to the score in a minute. But nice sounding songs in a voice which is very capable, then I'd have been pleased. But all they did was turn around and sing out, and then turn slightly to this side and sing out. My God, lather, rinse, repeat, kill me now, I'm done. Now, there were a few tiny moments where that wasn't the case, and that really stood out. But even in those moments, I wanted more. Mm. I thought, oh, I've more, if, if only, if only. But yes, that's that uninspiring, uninspiring staging and uninspiring direction, which is really, really sad slow because it let everything slow. else down. Talking about the score, Music, you've heard one song in this, you've heard them all. Yeah, they're so similar. So many the style of them... is sort of jazzy, slow, soft jazzy, Jazz, a, bit bl a bit bluesy at times. And when I it's upbeat, and there's some really nice stuff when it's upbeat, and yeah. it sounds really good, but the staging looks it down. Staging... That's really nice. There's a number of three girls, um, and boy, they sang it great, and it sounded brilliant. It three was that girls um, sort of tango. Themselves. What was it? Cellbot tango oh, moment. I've got a bit wet on the lens there. <laughs> um, a bit damp look. It was that cellbot, and yeah. yeah, it was so uninspired. It sounded great. Cast was great. 
they about, just stood at chairs. Think they about Cell Block Tango and the fact that each of them tells a story through dance and, the, and they move to the music and they feel That's the it. lyrics. None of that in this. The You've music the and ability, the vocal. Like the Cell Block Tango, if someone just stood sat and sang it just out, I didn't put any emotion into it, it'd be a boring number. What makes that number great is the fact that you live the lyrics. And each of those performers in Cell Block Tango in Chicago lives the lyrics. None of them live the lyrics in this and the director hasn't made them. I don't know. I, I think they did. I think they did the best they could, but the performances and the vocal and what the orchestra band were doing were completely different to what they were staged to do and what they, the limited choreography that they were given to do. They were just completely at odds with each other. And we're back in the room. Yes, that's, I mean, they wanted to get rid of us. Who can blame them? <laughs> they didn't want to get rid of us. No, Thank you for letting us stay as long as we yeah, did. Thanks, Trude. And it's wet. It so, is wet. you know, we're going to get moving. Anyway, I feel as if we need to move on. Yes. We could talk about the staging and the, or the lack thereof all day we could i think we've cast. made that point let's um, talk about kimberly walsh as annie girls am i allowed going star. first i mean she's always been my favorite girls allowed her. and uh, you know i'm really glad that i've got this to her performance in her, her acting. Her acting was believable. Her acting, her acting was really good. Was great and so consistent at ease throughout. And just like not over the top, yep. but I believed everything, all the nuances of the lines she seemed to get. They seemed to connect to her. Yep. I really enjoyed what she was doing. It a was a real, real shame. A real pleasant that, surprise in her ability. A real shame that she's got this direction. Yes, and that, and through all of her numbers, pretty much she was just told to sing. She yep. sounded great. I'd love to hear an album of her singing this, well, just this she's jazz music. <laughs> No, but just just okay, this jazz music. She, her voice, I felt, Suits. suited this style really well. Interesting. That's do you, do yeah. you, because well, when you put a pop star into a leading musical theatre role, you always worry that they're gonna end, they're not gonna be able to rise to the occasion. On that note, let's talk about Jay McInnes. Okay, what did you think of Jay McInnes? I uh, um, unfortunately, uh, this is not for him. Okay. Um, I, I've got to agree, um, I, as I always say, committed, absolutely, yeah. he looks good. I was almost He's, thinking... He looks a bit young, to be honest. Like, I was for almost me, thinking... He, was a, he, was a bit, he seemed a bit young for the role, but... <gasps> is I mean, it wrong to say... Use your imagination. It's, it's difficult, because you bring yourself up in front of people, and I don't want to destroy someone or destroy someone's dreams or someone's work, because I'm sure he's very committed and he's doing all he can. However, he can sing... To a point. To a point. It's not a great. No, he doesn't like, have a wow, massive it's, range. It's not and the some of the some of the really limited. beltier notes, I was like, Ugh, I didn't know if we were going to get there. It felt like a stretch, and almost I felt like we were having to tone it down, and we were having to, you know, as a musical director, we were probably having to say, yeah, we probably can't get there, Jay. Let's not try. So I didn't buy it too much for me. No, uh, acting definitely ability again, like not, not against the, Kimberly, not against Kimberly, and also the lines that should have resonated landed or had a laugh were just too throwaway there were certain moments there was a moment with the tie in one scene which carried on to a song in another but not enough was made of it in scene one for it to have the punchline later down the road like if you're gonna set up a joke with a long lead up you've got to make sure that you're kicking it at goal with a big powerful blast and we didn't get it harriet thorpe um is a fantastic actress we just didn't see her we yeah. needed to see much great more job of her for harriet because she's, yeah. she's in two scenes and she gets and she's a great number in them. and part of a number and yeah she's steam she's steam stealing when she does do it but i mean there's no surprise there really oh she's how great. am i going to say the sermon it's her name tanya, tanya matherin i Math should know this Math really Math i mean you've worked with her i should do she's just tanya to you though I just of tanya. course <laughs> tanya, absolutely. Just tanya um, to me. i really liked what she was doing yeah. really A's, yeah. nice vocal. She's great, she's funny, she can sing. She's probably the best vocalist losing the brolly. Oh, there we go. Um, she's probably the best vocalist up there for me, actually, in oh, terms really? of ability. Yeah, oh, I thought fantastic. she was really belty and totally like gave me. Yes. She gave me a musical she theater had the big performance. Burr. Yeah, and but I talking about that. the big burr, I also really enjoyed Corey English as the friend Rob. Again, yeah. he had those real good numbers with the kids. Pretty much was yeah. his double act. Yeah. Uh, but when he sang them, when he performed them and did them out, I thought that vocal and that performance was true musical theater where it should have been pitched. And again, just need to stay in to match. You it. mentioned but the I kid. Love Let's talk about Jonah. Actually, who, I don't know which who one. We I had. believe I believe that we had Jonah. Job Hart today in the role of Jonah. Yes, and I he think you're right. Was 
fantastic. Yeah, like, I, and, and we always go on about the kids and the ability of kids in shows, but you can get bad cringe-worthy child performances where you're like, oh my God. You can just imagine like a stagey mother and, oh, he's the best. It's like that. This guy was just fantastic, like throughout. He seemed to me to be the one that was most in character consistently and just... It's just it was a great sell. I don't know how to to explain it. I believed and loved him. Yes. A lot. Now, um, talking about things we loved, then I, I just said the um, cast were, was capable. Good, capable. Um, shame we didn't get them see them do that much but i think that's all we can say really about the cast yeah but other things i did love i did love the set yeah which is morgan, morgan large. large i that sold it for me and the projection as well yeah uh is there a projection the video, video design, design ian william, william galloway. galloway i thought the um the bringing together of the set and the design really yep. made the piece. Yep. I, I loved it. I, mean, the I set, think that's a real selling the point. The set is very simple but effective. It's just like a rotating two-story house and there's a like watery lake and some decking-y bits. Yes, but nice things that come down in but, front. Yeah, cleverly like the, done. And it moves together. and Yeah, simple but effective but complicated but simple. Yeah, I really liked it. But brilliant, like because it's Morgan Large, and I think he is one to. In fact, Break a Leg's nomination, best design for Morgan Large for Sleepers in Seattle. I agree, actually. I, I really do I agree. Think he's just a genius, yeah, and he really understands. Nice. He's just great. Beautiful to look at. Right, we've taken up far too much time. Let's I guess you're probably wondering how many stars we are going to give Sleepless, Sleepless and a Musical, musical romance. romance. Not Sleepless. Say that. Anyway, Sleepless in Musical Romance, we at the Troubadour here at Wembley Park Theatre, we are going to give two two stars like, for this piece. Not completely abysmal, I want to tear my eyes out, but just for the fact that the I'm, I'm really not sold on the story here. I do find it a little bit weird, and just the unforgivableness about the direction and staging, or literally the lack of direction and staging. Just when you go to the theatre, you know, I feel like the best directors out there, people like Emma Rice, for example, who can take a script that might not be like reading it on paper, might not be that compelling, and they can go, what have I got to do to make this a show? What have I got to do to make an audience thrilled at this, at this lack of material? And Emma can do it. Unfortunately, I don't know if this guy can. And I think that's the thing. And that's exactly what I was going to say. There's so many people who can make that happen in a small space, such as the rink, yeah. the Southwark Playhouse, dynamic and beautiful, tiny space. Yeah. Uh, Fanny even and Fanny Stella. and Stella, which we saw a couple of weeks ago, yep. French venue, yep. little, tiny little outside. It's dynamic. So dynamic. Stuff it's is happening. All the time. All of your brief encounter, Emma Rice. Yes. Romantics Anonymous, Emma yes. Rice. There's there's so much out there. Yeah, like even the singing in the wow. rain. Yeah. We saw at the mill at Sonning, a tiny yeah. little space. He's putting on this big production, yeah. but it moved. Yeah. And it had vision, it had yeah. creativity. Yeah. 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 And they, they just didn't so happen much here. Lacking. Now, yeah. that's just what I think. And just what I think. There were people in the audience who, come the end, gave a standing ovation. And that just goes to show that theatre is so subjective. You might come and have a great time. I think yes, it was lovely so, to be back in a theatre. Like I can't deny the fact that we it's champion really that all the back. way. And we would say, come along and make your own mind up, like you Please always, stay. always do. We've got to support the arts, and this might be the new normal for a while yet. Social distancing. We've got to show, got to go along and show that it works, as we won't get the next production. And producers keep on producing. Yeah. Directors keep on going at it yeah. and directing. So, you win some, you lose some. Yeah. And, and audiences. Do you know what I mean? We've got to keep going. So. Got to keep going. Come along. Tickets aren't that expensive, guys, and it's a full show. It's a full two-hour show. It's like, a proper show. It's a proper. It's got Ooh. an interval. It's got a new inside. What more do you? On. It's what been so want? long, it's like, but that's still that can happen, yeah. It can, anyway. Right, that's just what we think. As we mentioned, let us know down below. Please hit subscribe, we'd love to see you like, more. dislike. We're the Breaker Leggers, and we'll catch you again soon. Bye. Bye.